All right, guys, we're back. Break Room Blitz. Thanks for joining us. I'm your boy DeAnthony. I'm my boy Don. I'm my boy Cons over there. So, The Walking Dead, episode three. Did you see it? Did you see it? Oh, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. What, we watched it? I think we did. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I think I watched Walking Dead because I don't really know. Because from what they gave me <laughs> with the first episode I'm saying, man. to this one. And we're on that decline. <laughs> <laughs> but they need to give us a lot of backstory. That's the thing. They need oh, like, man. character it's... development. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. I really felt like I was wasted. <laughs> wasted all the, um, I guess, anticipation I had all week for this. Because they're like, oh, we're showing you about Daryl. All the torture he went through. Yeah. And I feel like I didn't. Shit happened. Must be rough. <laughs> so we get this episode. It's supposed to be about when they took Daryl, threw him in the back of the truck, and how they are gonna break him. How they're gonna scare him, yeah. how they're gonna torture him to where he's gonna end up on his knee whenever Negan walks by. I mean, as if like seeing like one of your best friends in this whole like crazy world brain bashed in like as if that wasn't enough torture already you know <laughs> and then they give us this which is like oh we're gonna bump some music yeah like, and everyone. honestly it wasn't even i would have been knocked out so they play the music yeah to where he can't you know go to sleep which is a torture tactic it is yeah um but you know what honestly if you didn't know that you don't know what's happening i, I don't know about you, you guys care about but it, it, yeah. if i'm sleepy uh I, my sleep has no bounds, and I will fall asleep. <laughs> right. I'll fall asleep at a club. I don't care. <laughs> right. I've slept in church. Everybody's not allowed that good. I've slept in front of TV on. Deadpool. Radio. Like, yeah. I'm there. You <laughs> I know, slept right? in Deadpool? Yeah. I did sleep in oh Deadpool. Oh, my gosh. If Ryan Reynolds can jump out in the street, theater, I'll be knocked out. Oh, yeah. So, but, you know, as a, a younger kid, maybe if I was, like, 17, I don't think I would have known what was happening there. Right. Because... You only know from, you know, watching movies or doing some research. As a 17-year-old, you're like, what is this music? What does that mean? How is this torturing you? Right. You know, it, so the, I thought the torturing was very, it was too subtle. It was very subtle. I'm like, yeah. well, you wanted to break down for what? Like, because you're giving them dog food or... Yeah, dog food sandwiches. Yeah, like, that's not... Breaking someone yeah. is like breaking their fingers. Maybe surrounding them with zombies. Well, you know? I'm thinking that they might end up doing something like that because that, and I feel that little field that they had there they had some zombies walking around and they had two people kind of regulating them the right. whole time yeah so i'm kind of curious what that's all about but uh yeah no i mean i don't know how you would sleep it's it's cold floor cell you're hardly eating any food and you've got freaking glenn on your mind like, but but you got to imagine too that like like okay i get that i probably would have maybe some nightmares over my friend you know but like i don't get many nightmares especially with you got to consider these guys are all desensitized killing zombies like all day every day yeah but so they're not in the middle of the forest so he doesn't have to fend for his life uh, per se because you know he's not out in wilderness with zombies he's in a confined area he's in a room he's safe he's got a roof over his head it can't be that cold um and I mean, they did eventually give him clothes, and they're feeding him yeah. regularly. Yeah. So I mean, if it's the exhaustion, horrible. if the exhaustion doesn't get you to fall asleep, then you know, I don't know. Right. I mean, the only thing that I saw that was torture was that they kept giving him this this dog food and this bread that without any water. <laughs> so then I'm like, man, I need to drink every three days. Yeah. I can go three weeks without eating. Yeah. So I feel like that's the only torture that he really got. Right. Um, other than I that, did. he was just pretty much being himself. You know, I, I need these writers. I feel like they're just, they're too uh, narrow-minded. Yeah. Like, we have to tell the story all the way through. Like, this episode could have definitely been 30 minutes. They could have picked it up. Or go back and forth. What's what what's Rick and them doing? Yeah. Like, I don't need 90 minutes of the, the next, the next episode says 90 minutes long. Like, just put, here, do this. Like, Daryl and his dog food torture music, and then go back to see what Rick is doing, and then, meanwhile, back at Daryl, same shit going on. <laughs> right. Same thing. Same thing. Right. You know, three days later, same shit going on. Meanwhile. Definitely. I mean, there are some things that we got. Yeah. So we got the, so we got a little bit more of Dwight. I don't know what Dwight's doing. I don't know if he's kind of, like, second-guessing, but just pushing through. Uh, Dwight's actually uh, a major jackass in the comics and um 
Like, uh, did you catch the story between why he's doing what he's doing now? Right, because so. of what Negan's doing. He like Negan basically broke him down, and well, no, no, not was, really. Actually, this so, was uh, well. So, jump in the story. Hopefully, anyways, I'll, I'll go and you can edit it. Whatever. Um, <laughs> In the story of Dwight, basically Dwight escapes with his uh, his wife and his sister, mm -hmm. and Negan was set to marry his sister. Mm -hmm. And Negan's all like, "You got a super hot sister. You got a super hot wife. I'm gonna marry the super hot sister." And uh, they tried to escape, and the means of doing so, uh, the super hot sister got killed. Right. He so, talked about that. Yeah. So yeah. now when they come back, it wasn't that he broke down Dwight. It's more or less. He was going to kill Dwight, but his yeah. wife stepped in and said, I'll marry you in place of that. Mm -hmm. So now this dude, I mean, he was broken down, but now this dude is out the sister, out his wife, and knows that his wife's screwing Negan. Like, how more screwed up Seems to be on a daily basis, because she's in the clinic getting with pregnancy tests. Pregnancy tests. Damn. So he's like, sorry about that. Maybe next time. And at first I was like, that's kind of weird. Why are you saying it like that? But now I know that that was his wife. <sighs> Super disturbing. And he has to just say this in front of this doctor so he doesn't seem like he's going against Negan. Man. So know, that part was kind of I don't care. I, if I were in Dwight's position, it was it was ride or die. I'm not letting you ride my wife. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm dying. Oh, I'm going to kill you. Well, I'm going to bathe in your blood. <laughs> but no. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that for me gives me the only hope for Daryl because I got to imagine that you know, Daryl's sticking to his guns, and Negan confronts him like, who are you? And he says, I'm Daryl. He doesn't say, I'm Negan, like everyone else, mm -hmm. right? So, I gotta imagine that Dwight over here, is, he should, like, convince him to, like, partner up. Let's get out of here. Let's get your wife and go. See, this is why I did not... See, this is why that episode is so insignificant, the torture. Because what that reminded me of was Roots. When they ask Kunta Kinte, what is your name? He's supposed to say Toby. No longer Kunta Kinte, you are Toby. Toby got whooped all day long. <laughs> all day before he, before he gave in. We're doing absolutely nothing in this episode. Nothing right. is happening. Not even half that. Like, not even half that. Not even. So I'm like, man, this, this episode is just useless. Yeah. And then you're going to give me a 90 minute episode? No. I don't need a 90 minute episode next time. <laughs> Give me a good full hour yeah. and then another full hour the next episode. But this one is definitely a it's filler. We're on the decline. It's a filler. And, 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 yeah. and you gotta imagine that like with each episode being worse and worse, the next episode <laughs> that's even halfway decent is just gonna be <laughs> awesome. You know? It's like finally they gave us something. Right, I wait all week. I feel like it's not fair for them to give me that. You know what? I, I waited until like the last season where they gave us that drop off, and I was like, "Oh, you know, next season is gonna be awesome." And then they give us this. Same old, same yeah. old. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Like, because it's been a while since I, I want to. I want to say maybe about season two or three was a constant go 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 when they were on the run. They finally got to the prison. Everything was getting swapped. Like that was a constant go go go. Right. And it just seems like because the thing is, we're getting tossed around in three different directions here. We've got Daryl. We've got um, what's it called? Carol. You know, and Ezekiel, and yeah. then we've got. So we still have to get back to Alexandria. We still have to get back to where Jesus, Jesus' farm's at. We still have to get back to Rick. And so, like, it's like literally, we're gonna have about. You can anticipate it about five to six episodes of of not even carrying a consistency. And so there's got to be a better way to. Nope. And this to is just edit. the half yeah. of the season. This is half. yeah, yeah. So, so we're gonna end on like a. a, a crappy note <laughs> yep, we are uh, we're gonna, we're, i feel like we're gonna end like at another drop off point where like you know we're back to alexandria and then they give us like some whack-ass priest taking care of the baby or something like, and you know it's, it's really sad because the, i feel like the first four seasons were just like awesome like at every turn oh yeah there's yeah. a sudden great yeah these last even terminus like three that, episodes, that, that, that episode terminus man it's just been bad. Like, like, can you guys, maybe you guys think, I only saw it one time, lies, I can't rewind it. Why did Dwight's bike break down? What happened there? So what the heck? Don't the tell me because it fell over. No, no. The was wheel, that Daryl's? The, the wheel got busted. It was Daryl's bike, and it was, not, it was he was wearing Daryl's vest, too. He's, like, trying to be Daryl. It's kind of sad. But um, I guess it's saying when he dropped the bike and the zombie fell down, I don't think Absolutely that would... Absolutely not. Yeah. I, you ride a motorcycle, <laughs> so I know. <laughs> I, when, that, when that happened and the, the wheel was torqued that much, I was like, the hell did you do? Like, you didn't show, it didn't show a crash scene. Like, no. And so, when he's walking, I'm uh, thinking he's walking the bike because he doesn't want to make a lot of noise. 
But honestly, you could have just rolled right through there. I don't understand why he's walking. Maybe he even saw the guy from a mile away and wanted to sneak up on him, maybe. But then the bike breaks, and now you're still walking it. And I just I'm like, oh. yeah. Maybe I'm just not seeing something. That, that whole part was so eerie for me. I thought like Daryl got away, and then he was dropping zombies on top of him or something. And I was like, where, where are these zombies coming from? Yeah. Right. And but you know what? What was kind of cool was to see the 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 um, the walkers are so like decomposed inside. They haven't been eaten so much that they can't even walk now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But maybe because it could have been because they jumped off. But I don't know about the jumping off. To, it, I don't know. I've tried to it's make something of that scene. Yeah. That it just wasn't. I don't think I can. There's just a couple of key elements with Dwight that I'm liking. Just the character development with him. I don't want to get to know him too much, to be honest with you. But I know he's a jackass in the comic books. But um, the transition to where he's at. I mean, I, I was just thinking about it. Put yourself in the place of the character, and me being a character guy is just like, man, like what would I be doing right? And that's what I'm saying. I'd ride or die. Like you know no, what? Like, like, the, like the, 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 the only significance that they, that they should give us for Dwight and his wife is to help get Daryl out of there. And you know what? I, I, I'm going to call it right now, and I'm going to say they're going to bust a suicide mission, and they're both going to die, Dwight and his wife, uh, to get away and help Daryl get away. If they go off the com, if they go away from the comic, then yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. But because to me, they're so insignificant at this point. He's not yeah, interesting. There's, no point. there's no. nothing interesting about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did like the part when he was, you know, yelling at his friend, like, "I will kill every single person you know." I thought it was the little the guy on the street gave up a little too, too quick. Mm-hmm. But that was the only interesting part of the whole yeah. thing. It's the only time he actually showed any real acting skills to me. He's not interesting. So I want him to just move on. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. I don't know why this guy is... Now, okay, so Negan. Okay, that's Negan's let's still a douche. To Negan. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if he's trying to be too cool or if it's really working. I can't really tell because he has all these like little gestures. Like I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird, mm-hmm. but... I'm still kind of buying it a little bit. He, he's very casual well, because he's so confident that, like, you know, I don't know, whatever presence he has about him that everyone just, like, bows down to him, you know? But, like, he's so casual and nonchalant about everything that when you think that he's about to threaten you, he lets you slide, you know? Right. So it's just, like... I kind of, I'm still kind of digging suspense. it, but it, it's kind of... I don't know if it's going to wear off or not. He's really not it, interesting. It, it, the one the part that thing. I really liked, the one part that showed me a different shade of Negan, it's one part in the episode, is when, you know, he's talking to him, and he, he does the whole thing where he walks up to him, and it's the first time you hear Negan get, have that serious tone, and he's like, what is your name? And so at that point, I was just like, oh, yeah. okay, so he's starting to get frustrated now. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, when he swung Lucille right at Daryl, Daryl just stood there. And so Negan knows this is a, he, he knows Daryl is tough. That's why he wants him. That's the hard thing with Negan right now is he wants Daryl. And he, I don't see how you can actually win a guy like that. Like honestly, anyone that you're gonna win over by fear, it's never really someone that you really want on your team. I want someone that that trusts me and respects me. Mm-hmm. Fear of me, like anytime they they get an opportunity to take advantage of my position. They're going to. Right. I mean, or they're not going to do the greatest job. Or I don't want someone that's got my back and we've been through some stuff. I, I don't see Daryl ever breaking up until, like, they actually e- e- kill him or they hold somebody against him, like, to threaten. Like, if you don't do this, then I'm going to kill, like, little Carl right here or something. Now, go, go for it. <laughs> if they, if they would have tortured him like they did Ramsey in Game of Thrones, oh, then maybe... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But what what they're doing? Yeah, not gonna get the results you're looking that's for. That's a vacation holiday in <laughs> like, compared to Game of Thrones. Right. <laughs> well, I honestly think that's how they're gonna have to threaten Daryl. But he Daryl clarified in this episode that he's got nothing left, because when he asked him, he says, "I know why you did it. You know, you did it for somebody." And he says, "And that's why I can't do it because he doesn't have anybody anymore." Yeah. And and that's the thing. Now Daryl has nothing left to lose. Now you you brought in a key character, Carl. Um, let's just say that I want to say that there are characters that will come into play later that I believe are going to be used against him to force him. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to happen, and I'm not necessarily dropping any spoilers here, but based on the comic series, there are other elements that are going to come into play, especially when it comes to Negan and characters that are, end up with Negan that you almost don't expect. So that's mm-hmm. from a comic side. Granted, they do it. 
See, um, I don't. I, that's interesting. I don't. I didn't take that scene that way. When he shows him, when he when he was about to shut the door, and he says, "I know why you did it because you you did it for someone," and that's why I can't do it. I'm. I got the fact that he was saying that. I can't do it because of those people mm-hmm. that I love. You did it. You did it because of someone you love. I'm not going to do it because, because of someone I, love I love. That's how I took it. That would actually, yeah. I, th- I thought about that too. That, way. that actually makes more sense too. I would. I would. I would like that more. Because there's still more people that he. Yeah, that right. Love, absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole did. crew. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it could go either way. Yeah. I'm not saying it's this. No. Wrong. But I actually like yours better to be honest with you. So. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but it's still too long. It's way too long. The fact that they, I like how they changed up the music at the end. They made it a sad song to try to make him cry. Right, right. And, and and the fact that he finally broke down. Like this is like the first time I ever see like, like Daryl really like just like grieving, just yeah. like really just like letting it out. Like I, I know that he was like like really pissed off and everything. And then like when everything di- went down with Glenn and his death at that point. But like this is like the first time that he just like broke down. That they actually yeah. show him, you know. So, yeah, honestly, yeah. Because even when they found uh, Carol's daughter, he didn't he didn't cry or anything like that. Right, well, that's the thing. He's been, he's been more of a stiff character when it came to that emotions. I think the last time we saw him get like this, our, our close to it was when, um, what's her name died? Uh, the uh, freaking uh, Maggie's sister. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm spacing on her name right now. But yeah, but yeah I think because he was really close to her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I think that was the last They were time. so close to actually getting her back. Did he cry? Yeah. I don't yeah. think he cried. I think he got. He did actually, because he was carrying her body, and you can see it. Like he was, he yeah. was done. Like yeah. uh, and that they, because they had grown so close. Because that was when the groups had split up, and it was him and her for a while. And then she was like going through this whole transitional phase where she's like gonna have fun, and they were drinking, and they were throwing bottles and breaking right. them. And, you know, Daryl was so just yeah. Sorry, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So. Huh. Well, you know, I don't think that we needed a full episode just to see him break down and cry. You know? <laughs> you know, 30 like, minutes, I'm telling you, you know? 30 minutes. And, and really, they could have just broke that up in 10-minute yeah. intervals going back and forth. That To me, that's true storytelling, right? On, at least for TV anyway. I mean, you can jump back and forth and make it mix together to where I still understand what's going on. We're five episodes away from the end is right. the thing. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. We're five gotta, episodes gotta away. you got to get this going. It's like, this I need is, to know. This is not good enough. What he went through and what Rick and them are doing to, to pre- prepare, all one episode. Yeah. Then we move on. Then we get back to the uh, the nights. Yeah, yeah, maybe overall it's just the pacing that we need. Is The thing is, that the you know, the pacing needs to change. Like, so, oh, so yeah, very much so. The pacing needs to change. Um, you guys are in the seventh season. We've had the past three or four seasons of consistent, consistent bounce up and then layer and then back up. And uh, you gotta change the formula now. You gotta, you gotta, to keep all your audience integrated. You gotta change that formula. Honestly, I'm gotta... thinking about next season. I might even just wait till the whole thing is done. Yeah. And binge it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then, then maybe it'll be a better story. Yeah. If I can just get it all at one time. It's so frustrating. It frustrates the heck out of me. And th- okay, like the only thing I can imagine is what they're doing is they're getting all their ducks in one row, and then the last couple episodes. They're just gonna like converge and like checkmate. That's it, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, the, all, all this thinking and what if scenarios. This is just me building up in my mind just to get torn down and like I'm just gonna hate it if it doesn't actually go through. Yeah, this reminds me of like money grabber movies to where they don't really put a lot into the story, no. but they still give it to you because then they're gonna watch it because of the name. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so that's I don't I can tell that right away because they're like, oh, let's just give them something because we know they're gonna watch it. You know, we don't we don't have anything to talk about, so let's do a whole episode, whole episode of Daryl. Yeah, yeah, let's just to do that, and then we can get our ducks in a row for the next episode. Right? They're they're betting on the fandom of The Walking Dead because it has huge fan base. Mm-hmm. So it it's like anything that we give them at this point is gonna be all new content, and they're gonna take it because they need to follow the story. You yeah. know. So we're going to get views regardless. I think at this point, they should definitely have more than eight episodes per half of the season. And, or not make us wait so long for the second half. Like, right. Cause like we were six watching, months. Yeah, and that's just a bit much. I mean, I know I know the filming and all that stuff goes down, but like, I appreciate the character development. I always appreciate character development. The story, it is good, but it's just, I I feel like I'm like a, a turtle walking through this show. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I'm, just, I'm, like, I'm like, at this point, the turtle even has more... Uh, it was entertainment, yeah. You know, because you, you get the 
I don't know, whatever. It just I, I need a little bit more now because yeah, they need to step I'm it up. Aching for some bacon, and I need it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So AMC, yeah, we did not like this one. You need to step it up. And I mean, you got three guys in a room telling you what's up. I mean, there's a whole audience out there that I've heard from everyone else. So yeah, but I, I, I want to know what everyone thinks about that. Yeah, definitely. I'm pretty sure everyone is still is, is saying some of the same stuff, unless they're just all about the characters. I need some story, man. Yeah. What are the characters doing? Yeah. yeah. And then that's why I can't hate the episode too much, because I do like my character stuff. It's, it's fun to get that. But at, at the same time, you have a character guy saying, yeah. all right, pick it up, guys, because I, I, I want to I want, I want to see some action. I want to yeah. see someone get it. Like we just, like, I want to see what happens with Rick. I want to know what's going to happen at this point. I want to see Rick reach that point where the switch goes bam. I want to see Carl take up the mantle and freaking go crazy like he's supposed to. And like, I want to see these things. I read the comics. I want to see it. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, don't be, I'm going to watch this many episodes, and it's going to be anticlimactic, and then you're going to wait, wait six months, and then it might get climactic, like your formula's not working. Yeah, hurry up and slow down, like rush all this slow-paced stuff. <laughs> right. So, if you guys agree with us, you should like, share, subscribe. Definitely share, though, so that we can get a bigger audience, so maybe AMC can even... Pay attention to us. Yeah. Because I think we have some really good valid views here. I think so. And it needs to get out there because I want a better show. Right. So, <laughs> all right, guys. We're Break Room Blitz. That's our, uh, I guess, our review on the third episode of The Walking Dead. Let us know what you think. Again, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, take a look at our uh, Instagram uh, page, Break Room Blitz. We got some stuff going on there. You're going to, you know, participate with what all the makings of what we do. Some of the um, toy box stuff that we do as well. Do movie um, reviews, show we, reviews. We do a lot. So, all right, guys. I'm DeAnthony. Avan. Coach. And we're out. Later, guys. Peace. <laughs>